Hello again, Michael Friedberg here from beautiful North Carolina. Today is Labor Day, and so we'll be doing a Labor Day shave, taking a bit of a different take on Labor Day. So let me get my face wet, get the shave going, and we'll talk through the products and uh, get going. This is a straight up shave. Showered a little while ago. Get my face wet. Start applying some of the, this is the Razor Rock Prebarba, which is a, uh, a very different kind of pre-shave than, for example, the pre-shave oil or the shave gel I was using before. That shave gel is really a very nice coconut oil based product and really would lather up as you apply it. This is much more of a kind of a glycerin-y slick feel to it. And so far, I've certainly been enjoying using it. All right, that should certainly do. This is just over two days worth of growth. All right. Well, Labor Day. Let's talk a bit about labors of love, shall we not? So, for example, today I'm going to be using the Wickham Soap Super Smooth. Another artisan soap from the UK. I'm still working my way through the uh, through the English lavender. Really enjoying this. Uh, but again, this is an artisan soap. This is being made by somebody who has decided to take on an extra piece of work to do something. I would imagine straight for the love of it, right? Because you love making this. This is probably not an enormous money making operation. Well, who knows? Maybe it is. I'll be shaving today with. Another labor of love. This is, of course, the Razor Rock Stealth Slant. I have returned to this after using the, jaw, the Jaws for a week or so. Uh, we'll talk about that as I go through the shave, um, why I've switched back. But again, this takes a long time to make. This takes time to prototype and to design and to go through the effort to figure out how to make it and what should be included and what price point should be sold at and to make sure that it actually shaves properly. Again, this is, I would consider to be a wet shaving labor of love. And then finally, real highlight of today's shave, another, another labor of love. Some of you will recognize this, many of you will not. But it is, of course, labor of love put in place by Jason Alter and Barton Peterson, Jamie Holden, the brush maker. This is the Big Shave 2014 limited edition. This is number 97, and I'll talk about sort of what's happened with this brush in the meantime, but just check out how unbelievable, so gorgeous this brush. Mixed, mixed medium, burl, and the resin, it just, the light just comes through in that beautifully. 24 millimeter knot, super badger, 50 millimeter loft, soft, pretty flexible, not like a really stiff, scritchy kind of backbone, really nice for face lathering. So let me go ahead and Get the lather going and we'll talk a bit about the, the labor of love that is the big shave brush. So second year in a row that, the, that Jason and Martin have done this design really is absolutely fantastic and uh, I had a chance to sort of show off the design to my son who took an immediate liking to it. Got kind of a skull and crossbones feel going on. Look at what that's doing. That just tears into it. It's wonderful. And so I ordered a brush number 85 and that brush was going to him. That was never going to see the light of this bathroom. And a very kind member, Eric Schuett of the Big Shave, decided that, well, he was gonna do something nice, I guess for the sheer love of it too, and purchased a second brush and got me number 97, because he felt like I shouldn't somehow miss out because I was going to give my brush to my son. So thank you very much for that. But again, another great example. Just, you know, people take all the work out of it. And doing this for the sheer pleasure of it. Just makes different take on the Labor Day today. Not to take away at all from the reasons behind Labor Day, but I thought I would just represent a different Different way of looking at it. Mm, this brush is really soft on the face. It does not have 
this really kind of rigid backbone. It's very flexible, pillowy. I've really enjoyed using it. It lathers like a beast. Uh, if you have never used one of these sort of new badger brushes before, or maybe this is one of your first, you were surprised at what it smelled like, a bit like a wet dog. Yep, that's right. And I, I don't clean them. I just use them. That funk goes away after a couple times. Kind of a good reminder of where it comes from. All right. Beautiful lather. Just great stuff off this. Wickham soaps. Third shave on a Rapira the Platinum Lux, which I'm also really quite enjoying. The blades have uh, been very, very good. All right. Pass number one. Yep. Let's just talk about why I switched back from the Jaws. Now, the Jaws is a very aggressive razor in the scheme of things. You know, compared to the 23C or a D89 open comb. And I had paired it with the heavier handle from the Mission, which lent it a little extra weight. But I switched, I switched from the, from the sled just to, just to sort of level set and just check again. Am I getting as good a shave as I think I am? And that first shave with the jaws again was... Well, I can't think of... I mean, sort of raw. And what I mean by that is that there is a very distinct feel of the blade on your skin. It is definitely aggressive. The actual feel of the shave, very different. And I did get a very close, smooth shave, but the areas that I had trouble with, with the stealth, <laughs> I actually still had similar not to the same degree, the same kinds of problems. There's a particular spot right here. Hair grows along that line and very flat, very hard to get. And I was also not able to shave with the jaws without a little bit of some familiar irritation. You know, being very light with it, Avoiding shaving where there was no lather. And I think in the scheme of things, it's just too aggressive a razor for my skin and for daily shaves. No, three or four days worth of growth. Oh yeah. With the jaws will just tear right through it. Okay, first pass. Yeah, so having come back to the stealth, it is still giving as smooth and efficient and as irritation-free a shave as ever. And while it's possible that it is a hair below, <laughs> a hair below the jaws in that final piece of the shave, I don't think it's really enough to make a, make a difference. It can still get extremely close shaves with both. I just got no irritation from using the stealth and I've just switched back back to that as my daily razor. I can sort of use it with kind of wild abandon, which to me I don't have to really worry about it or be too careful or watch it or have any kind of nervousness or trepidation. There are certain parts of the shave with the jaws that I just know, man, if you're not paying attention, it's gonna be a cut for sure. And that's particularly, for example, right there under the nose. Skin is already tight. Edge of the blade touches it, you gotta be really careful about it. Okay, this is the against the grain pass. 
super smooth is just doing wonderful job make sure that you're using enough water with this this is one of those soaps too where it is very easy to sort of overload your brush and then you don't want to skimp on the water as you're building your lather so if you are using the soap and you're finding that it's still a little bit thicker pasty well you may have overloaded and just add a bit more water to build up the lather you're going to be very happy with the results Circumference almost done. Yeah, the other thing that I have tried to cut down on is worrying too much about super crazy against the grain on a regular daily shave. Very often just not worth not worth the risk. Just in two particular spots at the bottom of my neck, just really not worth it. You know, let's talk about one more labor of love, shall we not? How about the Big Shave? Big Shave Facebook group? Steve Farragher started that. I don't think he could have ever imagined how many people would be joining. How big the membership would grow. How many people would request to be added any given week. People love them somewhat shaving, really gaining in popularity. And that, that comes with its own sort of labor of love. And that is that for the people who have been involved in wet shaving longer than the new people, every influx of new members always comes with the same influx of new new questions at least they're questions that are new to the people that are asking them but to the old hands they just seem like same old same old familiar questions we've been asked a thousand times before but you know what that question is new to the person asking it and you know what's even newer to the person asking that question the answer and so you know think of it sort of as your own labor of love there Yes, it may seem like the same questions come up again and again, and they do, and for good reason, is because there are things which people who are new to wet shaving really honestly don't know. And as obvious as they might seem to you, if you're an old hand, or if you'd like to use the term from Bungie, a grizzled elder, it can be uh, it can be sort of deflating and sometimes tiresome to think well, I had the same questions again and again. But the fact is that if you're new to this, there's really no way to know. So that is sort of my own labor of love, as it were, is to keep answering those questions. You should just spend a little bit of extra time making sure that a new person who has taken the time and been brave enough to ask a question, make sure that person gets an answer and to try to help make sure that where answers are provided, that people feel like they're getting help. And just keeping at it. I don't mind answering those questions again and again because, like I said, the question is new to the person asking it. So just remind yourselves of that too. If you feel like, wow, we've heard this all a thousand times before, you have. That person hasn't. And just think that's part of being part of the community.
that you do help on new people and you try to move people along. Give them that same sense of accomplishment. And myself right there, a little too much pressure. Talking and shaving is a recipe for cutting yourself, by the way, if you're wondering. See, if I did this with the jaws one, it would be so irritated. All right. Done. Oh my God, he's shaving with no lather. No, actually, I really don't recommend that, but you will find with some of the more, some of the really sort of high quality soaps, you'll find that even though the visible lather is gone, especially when you wet your face again, there's just this layer, sort of residual slickness, and you can definitely do like a quick, a quick cleanup without having to go back and re-lather, but it really depends on your skin, the razor that you're using, and the soap. I definitely don't, recommend, I don't recommend this as sort of a general thing, but it's definitely doable. But in general, yeah. Shaving where there's lather is going to be obviously better than shaving where there is no lather. All right, quick and easy. All right, well, I'm going to rinse off my face, apply a little bit of aftershave. Oh, there's just lather everywhere. Well, what are you gonna do? Yeah, that brush, by the way, that big shave brush. Love the design on the bottom. And clear that up a little bit. Very cool. Yep, really, very nicely done. The handle is ergonomic and easy to hold. It's got a nice grip at the bottom. It's got a pretty good height, so you don't feel like it's too stubby. Um, the loft on the on the knot. It's quite nice, soft, very flexible. I imagine if you're bowl lathering, you're probably enjoying that quite a bit as well. Again, thank you to everyone who was involved in that. Really appreciate that, and uh, I'm sure it'll be treasured for a long, long time. All right, let me just towel off my face. Oh my God, my shirt went enough? Yeah, I think so. All right, so, A different aftershave. I am still finishing off the uh, the Razor Walk Baby Blue, uh, which is in the atomizer bottle from the 888. But uh, today I'm going to be using this uh, this Jalu, uh, this Knights of Izmir. Uh, I got this on sale. Um, I think the price for the for the regular full size bottle is I think a little high personally, but on sale I was okay with it. This has kind of an interesting sort of cypress, woodsy, maybe juniper kind of smell. Goes on with a bit of a slick face feel and it starts off with a, a bit of a sweet note. And then when it dries down, a kind of woodsy, slightly musky incense scent kicks in. Certainly not pronounced for a long period of time, but but that woodsy scent does linger for a little bit. So I actually really quite like the face feel. Um, I finished off my uh, my fine triple X. That's long gone. The baby blue is almost gone. That's as I said in the atomizer bottle. And then once that's gone, then I will bring the world's greatest aftershave ever into the mix. I know you're wondering what that could possibly be. <laughs> it's the Friedberg, obviously. But that's really it today for my uh, my Labor Day shave. I want to thank you all so much again. Thank you again to Jason Alter and Martin Peterson for putting together the Big Shave 2014 Limited Edition brush. Thanks again to Eric Schuett for providing me with a second one so that my son can enjoy his number 85 and he is enjoying his number 85. Um, Wickham Soaps, fantastic stuff. 
Thanks again to Joe Abitangelo for putting the effort into producing the Stell Slant. Really loving that still. Quite happy with that as my daily razor. Well, guys, I would say that's really it. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and uh, goodbye.